happy little games. Retro video game fans around the globe will hear the name Sega and immediately be thrown back to a much simpler time when all it took was 25 cents for a solid 5 to 10 minutes of pure, unadulterated bliss. Whether you were a fan of their various home consoles or the rows upon rows of arcade games, Sega was indeed one of the kings of the arcade industry for a long, long time. The company has created a number of huge franchises over the years with one of their biggest and best being the Golden Axe series. This medieval hack and slash formula would play host to nine unique games both at home and in the arcades. Today, we are going to discuss the little scene follow up that remained an arcade exclusive for almost 30 years. The name of the game is Golden Axe The Revenge of Death Adder and it was released exclusively in the arcades in 1992. This took the original tried and true formula of the original and pumped it up with a little 32-bit technology and what you are left with is another fantastic arcade experience from the hit makers themselves. Why did this game take 30 years before it was released at home? Why weren't any conversions for this game ever released? What comic book movies and cartoons did Sega sample for this game? Let's find out as we learn about the history of Golden Axe, The Revenge of Death Adder. In the mid-1980s, Sega was once again turning towards the east for a little bit of inspiration. Fans of my channel will know that this was not an uncommon occurrence as you can see various properties taking <clears throat> inspiration from some of the most popular movies Hollywood has to offer. Before talking about The Revenge of Death Adder, we have to go back to the beginning and check out the original Golden Axe. This was the second game brought to us by Sega designer Makoto Uchida and what a doozy it was. Mr. Uchida had been employed with the company for a number of years but this was not his first successful arcade outing. That honor would go to the epic fantasy brawler Altered Beast. While the playability in this title has not aged very well, it made a lasting impression on anyone who played it. Sega had requested that Mr. Uchida develop a more traditional Double Dragon style game for his next outing. He had always been a fan of the Kunio Kun series and also Double Dragon, but wanted to create something more fantastical and also just a little bit beefy and not at all queefy. According to Mr. Uchida, My father loved action movies and I used to watch them with him. During the development of Golden Axe, I rented a video of Conan and watched it until the tape was worn. When designing the game, something else he wanted to implement was the two-player action found in Double Dragon. The main character of Axe Battler was clearly inspired by Arnold Schwarzenegger in Conan the Barbarian. There were two other characters, Tyrus, the big bad female of the game, and also Gilius Thunderhead, who may be a bit short in the pants, but is very quick and powerful. The big beefy barbarian was also used when it came to the game's iconic sound effects as they ripped off samples from both Conan the Barbarian and Rambo. The game itself went through a few name changes starting out life as Battle Axe but it had to be changed due to licensing issues. The next title chosen was Broad Axe but right towards the end of development the president of Sega US saw Gilius' axe and noticed that it was yellow. He decided the name of the game should be Golden Axe which Mr. Uchida didn't like but felt it was necessary in order for Sega of America to sell the game. The game was a huge success spawning a number of sequels and here we are 25 years later still talking about it. 
The original Golden Axe ran on Sega's tried-and-true System 16 board, which played host to a slew of other Sega classics such as Shinobi and Afterburner. After squeezing every last drop out of this technology and dabbling with the System 24 board, Sega threw down and entered the 32-bit era. The introduction of the Sega System 32 was a milestone for 2D-based, sprite-based games, which also utilized the super scalar technology that we all know and love. The next generation of hardware would be Sega's jump into the world of polygons, but that is a discussion for another day. The games of the System 32, for the most part, would be unconverted, although plans were in place to release some of these titles onto the 32X. But due to the failing of this hardware, it never came to pass. By the time the Sega Saturn came along in 1995, these games were deemed too old to convert as they wouldn't really showcase the system's power. These titles would lay dormant for the next 30 years, but more on that in just a bit. After Golden Axe, Designer Makoto Ujita went ahead and designed the game Alien Storm and felt it was time to revisit the land of Uria. He knew that the System 32 technology could provide the necessary power it needed to bring his vision to life. In the meantime, Golden Axe 2 was released on the Sega Genesis in 1991, but this was more of a retread of the original and not a brand new game. Mr. Uchida decided to ignore the second game in the series and proceeded with a full-blown follow-up to the original arcade title. Thanks to the success of other four-player brawlers such as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and even the epic six-player X-Men title from Konami, the higher-ups at Sega wanted to get in on that sweet, sweet multiplayer pie and instructed Mr. Uchida to make his brand new Golden Axe game a simultaneous four-player brawler. Mr. Uchida wanted to make everything bigger, badder, and better, so he decided to go all out with this game. Everything from the sprites, to the magic, to the levels were increased, making for a visceral tour of what the System 32 could really do. Speaking of the levels, the original Golden Axe was criticized for being a bit on the short side, so this game featured not only longer levels, but also branching paths. The game features four brand new playable characters with only Gilius Thunderhead returning as a side character. Axe Battler and Tyrus are nowhere to be found, with the main character of the game having one of the best names in entertainment history right next to Dirk Diggler, which would be Stern Blade. He is, to be honest, a clone of Axe Battler, but he has a lot of new moves. There is also Dora, who is a female centaur and has apparently been moonlighting as an American gladiator because she brandishes a bugle stick. Goa, who is another beefy character who brandishes Gilius Thunderhead. This deadly duo is a force to be reckoned with as Goa smacks enemies around with his giant axe while Gilius uses his magic to decimate enemies. And finally, there's Little Tricks who isn't just for kids as he provides something a bit more unique when compared to the other characters. He is faster and provides rapid attacks with his Pitchfork of Doom. As far as his magic goes, instead of destroying all the enemies on the screen, he summons a tree for each player that is present and provides apples that can be eaten to recover two health bars. As far as the story goes, that sneaky little Death Adder has been resurrected and somehow obtains the Golden Axe. He enslaves the land of Uria, constructing a giant castle in his image. The four distinct heroes have to band together in hopes of defeating Death Adder once and for all and rescuing the people of Uria. Fans of the original game will feel right at home as this game also features three dedicated buttons including one for magic, one for attacks, and one for jumping. Each character also has special moves and a hidden finisher. Thanks to the multiplayer aspect, there are now tag team moves available with some able to decimate bosses with a single blow. One change from the original Golden Axe is that everyone only has one magic spell. 
The spells do not increase in power with the number of pots collected, but require a certain number to work. The short, little, bearded creatures who will wake you up and give you food also make their return. The last time I encountered someone like this, I married her. The blue thieves will give you magic pots while the green thieves will drop meat which recovers your life. There are also rideable creatures in this game including the triumphant return of Chicken Leg as well as the Green Mantis, Scorpion, and the Bone Dragon. Each of these creatures also have their own variations. It is possible to use weapons while on these mounts as well. The enemy design is also vast and varied as you would expect with Makoto Yuchida at the helm. The graphics are absolutely spectacular with large sprites and smooth animation. The backgrounds have also received an upgrade with some nice parallax scrolling for your viewing pleasure. The game even utilizes the super scalar technology as there are some levels in which you are walking forward where it really shines. There are interactive backgrounds with objects you can break as well. Crates that can be broken will reveal power-ups and bonus treasure. Speaking of the interactive backgrounds, there are switches that can be used to free captured slaves. If your standard sword or pitchfork of doom is not enough, on various levels there are many catapults to aid you. Certain enemies can also throw spears, but if you are quick enough you can use your weapon to deflect them. There are also crates to smash that reveal potions and food. One nice feature that the original Golden Axe didn't have is the ability to change your character after you continue. Although there are only five levels with a mini boss at the end of each one, the levels themselves are very long. As I mentioned, there are branching paths which does help the replay value. The levels, as stated, are extremely detailed with lots of little animation thrown in. In the backgrounds, you'll see slaves scurrying about or other little random bits while you are attempting to take down as many enemies as possible. The enemies are like cockroaches in which they keep coming in waves with sometimes six or seven on screen at once with no slowdown which helps make the world feel alive. Certain rideable characters such as the Mantis has a finisher where they give the enemies a little chiropractic adjustment to their neck. It's a small detail but really cool to see. On one level, you are captured and strung up and you need to tap the buttons as fast as you can to free yourself. Another cool scene transition that appears between stages and helps further along the story is the map scene in which your giant tan arm points out exactly where you have to go. It uses some nice pre-rendered graphics and they look great. All this combined with the excellent gameplay makes it one of the best beat-em-ups ever created. The music once again is composed by Masanori Takuchi and Tomoyuki Kawamura and they did a stellar job. Clearly they were inspired by the Conan movies and thanks to the upgraded System 32 it sounds spectacular. I've known for quite some time that some of the sounds for Revenge of Death Adder were taken from the movie Conan the Destroyer. However, I just came across this video where it points out that Sega ripped off a couple of other comic book movies, in particular Who Framed Roger Rabbit and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There are more examples in the provided video which I will link to down below. Thanks. 
The levels you encounter are Rescue the Villagers, The Trail to the Enemy's Town. Sneak into the town. March forward to the castle of Death Adder. And finally defeat the Death Adder. The bosses you face are not quite as varied and you do have to face them more than once. Some of the bosses you encounter are giantess. Bad brother. Cyclops. Scythe Armor. Reaper. And the big bad mamma jamma of the game, Death Adder. You face off against him on the back of a giant dragon. <laughs> After defeating Death Adder, Gilius jumps on his head, giving him a little slice and dice action right between the eyes as the fatal blow. Death Adder and Gilius fall off the dragon and explode in a blaze of glory. The castle crumbles and the land is saved.
The next scene shows all of our heroes, including Gilius, hooting and hollering in a bar surrounded by patrons. The camera zooms out as every other enemy, creature, and boss in the game joins in on the fun, including Death Adder himself. A banner gives us quite the tease, telling us they will see us next game, but it never came to be. After this, the game is over. As I mentioned, this game remains on the unconverted list, but almost 30 years after the release, the game was finally available to play in the comfort of your own home. Sega have been trying to appease retro gamers for quite some time with their continued support of their vast library of games, so here we are with the Astro City Mini. This is a fully functional miniature arcade cabinet that has 37 games built in. The design of this 1-6 cab is based on the Astro City arcade cabinet released in Japan. The system includes the ability to play your games on the big screen via HDMI, as well as two controller ports. Of these 37 games, you have your classics such as Shinobi, Wonder Boy, and Alien Syndrome, but also some titles that were available for the first time at home including Dark Age, Arabian Fight, Radmobile, and Golden Axe The Revenge of Death Adder. This is a cool little system that any fan of Sega's vast library of arcade hits should own. Also released just a few years back is the Golden Axe Arcade Machine from the masterminds at Arcade 1UP. These little works of art include a recreation of the original arcade unit and it features five arcade titles for your playing pleasure. These include four joysticks for some good old fashioned multiplayer madness. The games included are Altered Beast, Shinobi, Wrestle War, Golden Axe, and the one to really get excited about is Golden Axe The Revenge of Death Adder. If you have never seen the various games from Arcade 1UP, these are authentic reproductions of the original arcade cabinets only just a bit smaller. It's perfect for people who don't have a whole lot of space. And there you have it everybody. The History of Golden Axe, The Revenge of Death Adder. This is, without a doubt, one of the best arcade brawlers on the market thanks to its vast enemy assortment, cool characters, simultaneous four-player action, along with some stellar music and sound effects. There have been other games released in the series after this, but the less said about these travesties, the better. If you've never had a chance to check out this fantastic arcade title, you owe it to yourself to do so. You'll be glad you did. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. If you would like to contribute but not sign up for my Patreon, you can always click the donate button up above. Thanks everyone for watching.